I'm the only uh, full-time infectious disease physician between, you know, between Darwin and Adelaide, I guess, so the only one in Central Australia. Originally I um, was working at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. I'd always wanted to work in an area of need. I came up in 2005 and I was absolutely stunned because I didn't realise it was going to be as bad as it was. I was seeing rates of uh, infections that were actually much higher than the rates in places like Alfred Hospital. We had the highest rates of bronchiectasis in the world, for example, and that seems to be focused here rather than the top end of Australia. And that raised questions as to, well, you know, is, is this related to something else, some other etiological factor within the environment? And that's where we started looking at HTLV1. Aboriginal health is this intractable long-term problem which is solved in a graded, gradual way over many years. The um, HDLV1 virus is a retrovirus, which means that it's related to HIV. It inserts its DNA into that of the host. Around 5% of people who are infected vertically, and this is the issue with mother-to-child transmission, so if you acquire the infection early in life, you are at risk of developing leukaemia. One of the puzzling things about the virus is that we've known about this since 1988, and yet there's no public health strategy to control transmission among Aboriginal people. Aboriginal people haven't been told that HDLV1 is prevalent in their communities. So that's something we're doing, but it has to be done in a very careful way. You know, after 30 years of doing very little, it's, it's hard to um, suddenly dump this on people and it has to be done in a culturally safe way. We're developing a story around HDLV1 that can be communicated in primary language and talking to people about what the risks are. Because again, most people don't get HDLV1 associated complications. We also employ local Aboriginal people and that's a way of building capacity within the communities. This is a problem that has to be managed with Aboriginal people and ultimately giving Aboriginal people control over how the message is, is put out. I think we're incredibly lucky to be part of the Baker because they have the strongest footprint, if you like, of uh, research in Central Australia. They've been doing practical community engaged research here for 10 years. The name is known, so you know, if we turn up with a you know, Baker logo on, people know who we are. And that's a great advantage for us, obviously, but also it's a, it's a measure for what, what the people think of the way we do business, so, and that's community engaged. I'm very thankful to the Baker to um, you know, support the work that we're doing in communities. So we couldn't do it without them. Mm -hmm.